Hello, welcome to Coaching for the Collective, where I gather with somebody who is feeling open enough to show up together with me. This is Tui. Welcome, Tui. We are going to dive into a coaching mentoring topic and see what happens. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Jella. I'm very excited to be here. Awesome. Yeah, I'm really excited to hear more. So how about you start with sharing what's really up and alive and what would feel miraculous to leave with today? Um, I guess, so with coaching, um, I've noticed, I felt, yeah, I've felt called to this work for so long and have been doing a number of psychotherapy and coaching and yoga and all kinds of trainings and I love it so much and practice with people um, as, as friends and um, as sort of colleagues more, but to make the leap to say that I'm a coach um, and to, to make it a lot more full time is, there's a real barrier there for me. And um, I think it's something around belief in myself. Okay. Um, and I guess it would be miraculous to leave with a new way of looking at that or a new insight uh, around why that might be and potentially a pathway forward. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Great. Yeah. So can we, can we start around this potential belief? Yeah. Yeah. So what I, what I heard is like a, there might be a belief with that like upward inflection of question mark. But maybe there's something here. I'm I'm curious about that question mark. What it is that you're sensing into, but you're not quite sure of. Um, I something around um, going out or like I've always so I've been able to start lots of things with other people over the years, like I've never had a, a, a sort of continuous stable job. Um, I've never wanted that. I've um, loved, yeah, creating, but it's always been with other people. And I think it's, there's like a, a protection of doing it with other people because you're, you've kind of got someone not to hide behind, but yeah, so it's not all you. So I think this real fear of being in the limelight and, yeah, and something else I know or I notice is this barrier that I have around um, around like the word coaching. Mm -hmm. um, so I've known and had experiences of a lot of people that call themselves coaches that have approached me and I found it um, quite invasive and really pushy. Mm -hmm. And there's I know that there's a lot of coaches that are, are very like do it fast you know go push yourself and that's great for them if that works for them and it works for their clients but it's definitely not my style and um and a lot of people have said that to me as well when or I've heard a lot of people around me say yeah coaching like I would never get a coach or um that doesn't land for who you are you saying you're a coach, but it's sort of reinventing the word maybe um, mm. for what it means to me and if I can shift it, because I do know amazing coaches and I love your style, Jella. Um, so I think that's also there of the sphere. So mm. I kind of step back, step away from it a bit too. Yeah. Okay. Really, I mean, first I can, I can so appreciate and relate to um, that aversion and <laughs> In particular, I mean, you're in New Zealand, I'm in Canada, and even being on very different parts of the planet, I think there's a collective kind of, hmm, what is this coaching thing? Especially as it's gaining more mainstream and it's something that's not regulated. So while there are, you know, like the International Coach Federation, like there are bodies that um, try to hold a standard. There are schools that train and certify that are awesome. There are people who um, are really embodied in being able to do coaching work. There are also people 
who coach from their own life experience, who don't have training in how to hold people in a change process. There are approaches that are coaching that is about, I mean, in what you described, like feet to the fire accountability coaching, that's about do the next thing, do the next thing, do the next thing. Um, so I do, I definitely like feel in the collective um, space that there are people who've had negative experiences with what coaching is. And there's also just a diversity of what, the, what defines coaching and how do you define coaching? So if I, if I look at that resistance, if I try and find the through line between the two things that feel up, you know, I've always created things with people and now there's like, Ooh, something vulnerable about going out. So, and then, well, these ways that coaches showed up don't really resonate. And so what it sounds like is that part of what you're right at the edge of is, um, what is your unique definition and expression of coaching that reveals itself on its own and stands on its own mm. does that how does that fit for you yeah 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 the early lens it's like this you're defining myself and or you know um that will always iterate but the this work and what it is for me and i guess yeah, it's been really clear on that for me so that I can share that with confidence with others. Um, yeah. As opposed to getting wobbly. <laughs> What's that? Um, as opposed to getting wobbly and like, ah. ah. <laughs> okay. And, and what, do you, what do you sense is needed to, to shed the associations for yourself so that you can actually claim and define the title of coach. It's yeah, it feels like this confidence in myself and um yeah, like unwavering confidence um of if someone else, you know, if you've had that experience or if you don't believe in coaching or you that's awesome um really acknowledge your experience and and this is what you you believe coaching is and, and this is kind of my stand and um who i am and that may work for you and that may not work for you and that's cool um yeah mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, I also hear in that too. Tell me if I'm taking you on a total rabbit hole that doesn't isn't relevant, but something I picked up in there is like given some of the feedback that you've heard about how other people interpret what coaching means, mm -hmm. um, how you've experienced it yourself, mm -hmm. there's like an undoing that needs to be done and a potential anticipation of backlash, like you need to talk somebody into something. Mm -hmm. Does that, yeah. does that feel accurate? Yeah. Yeah. So there, so it sounds like there may be both the building of your confidence and also, so there's something that I, that I see a lot when people are um, anticipating marketing or sharing about their services and it's the anticipation of having to talk somebody into something of having mm -hmm. to change someone's mind. Mm. And so then the way that they think about how to talk about it becomes like an argument that they have to make. Mm. And that in itself can be demoralizing and exhausting. Mm. Mm. And so I, I was just picking up on that a little bit as a possibility to consider when you think about what you share and how you share it of who are the people who are already hungry for coaching, want coaching, and are really looking for a coach who's going to work with them in a way that doesn't have that pushy, overriding, whipping accountability nature to it. Mm -hmm. and, and so you would need to start with the assumption that there, there is a pocket of people enough to financially sustain you that are really looking for just your style and just your medicine. Mm. And then how do you express that 
and share that and market that so that those people can find you and immediately recognize you versus try to express what you do in a way that's convincing or changing a mind that doesn't want it or agree with it. Yeah. 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 That really lands. And, um, something that I think of when I start, when you started talking about that was, especially when coaches grow their business, the, the ones that I've seen, um, a lot of them use social media a lot. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of, you know, um, videos and posts and things and you know they can be really motivational and, and awesome and and they help so many people and it doesn't feel authentic for me um to work to to do that and be there and so it's this thing around finding my authentic voice um it really feels like and and what you said really landed of yeah like uh, someone said to me the other day are you trying to solve someone's problem or are you trying to sell them something, you know, cause it's two different things. Like you're, you're trying to push it or they're like, Oh my God, thank you. <laughs> you know, and they're coming to you. So, um, yeah, that really lands. Um, yeah. Okay. So it sounds like a lot of what's really here for you. If I were to, if I were to try and kind of hone in on the, where to focus that path forward is it does sound like it's a real kind of inside job mm -hmm. around confidence. It's around your unique voice. Um, not looking to what other people are doing as the benchmark for what works, mm -hmm. but really being able to feel what feels authentic, aligned and true to you mm -hmm. and then try it mm -hmm. and then iterate on it mm -hmm. and, and see what starts to, emerge from your true expression and something else that comes up is um i think what some i've always had um i've always had so many groups of friends and you know i've been able to connect with kind of all kinds of people um and they haven't necessarily all come together. Like I haven't, <laughs> haven't always brought them together. Um, so, so I can sort of be this person with these people and this person with these people and this person with these people. Not so much anymore, but when I was um, younger and, and I notice the remnants of that, of, of still wanting relationship, like still wanting harmony, I guess, and, um and not so, or something that goes on for me like sub oh i don't know if it's subconsciously but i don't want to create tension in that relationship or with these kinds of people because because if i talk about this that might be really triggering for them and they might not agree with that or that might put them off and so there's this real like um, I think I've, I've, I've stood back for a long time of saying, actually, I believe that trauma is held in our body and that, you know, all of these things that I've trained in for ages and I notice other people can go into a training or I'll talk to them about something and sometimes <laughs> they'll then share it with utter confidence. And I'm like, I'm still, not, I'm still not sharing it because I'm, I'm, I just hold back, um, in light of wanting to keep the peace in some ways mm -hmm. but but also sometimes i'm really yeah forward if that makes sense mm -hmm. you know I, I i work with metaphor a lot in our in this work and um what what this kind of way was sounding like and even these kind of what it sounds like is a different kind of morphing like a kind of like a chameleon who i can really kind of move into a space but I'm going to check the space and the colors of the space and kind of adapt to those colors to keep the harmony of the environment. Does that, you giggled as I said it, does that fit for you at all? Yeah, I giggled because I'm doing my, um, my ICC training at the moment. Yeah. And yeah, my yeah. metaphor for my current way as a coach is a chameleon. <laughs> oh, that's funny. You've already been given that? I gave myself that. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, look at that. We're <laughs> <laughs> okay so what do you sense is 
needed to more boldly um, own your space and own your truth. Mm. Feels like this healing and um, what uh, what's under it is safety for me. Um, I notice that really lands. It's like if I don't disrupt the waters too much, I'm safe. Because, um, for instance, m most of my family wouldn't like this wouldn't land or you know um my extended family and and walk off so um yeah okay. safety there's something around healing and feeling safety in myself yeah beautiful beautiful so i want to i'm gonna it might feel like a kind of circling around somewhere else move but I, I'm, I'm wondering how it links is what you shared at the beginning about how you've created lots of stuff with other people. And originally you'd said that you hid behind them. And in a, in a way, it feels like a lot of what we've been exploring has been like what's missing and what, and the gap that you'd need to fill to kind of show up in this way as this coach that you want to be. What I'm curious about is kind of like what's already here to leverage and specifically with the other people. So sure, I'm, it sounds like there's some safety, mm. but what is offered by creating stuff with other people that has allowed you to step out more fully or make and, and make things happen? Yeah, it's like if anything was to happen or if it's like, which is, um, sounds so backwards, but, um, well, yeah, silly, but it's like on it's all of us, it's not me alone standing there, you know, like, because you're, you're always, you're kind of going to get criticism and you're going to get, you can't make everyone happy. And so, um, <laughs> this like perfection in numbers kind of thing yeah yeah it's kind of like okay so we're standing there on a stage and either it's me alone getting like rotten tomatoes thrown at me or it's like four of us you know um yeah okay so here's what i hear if i were to kind of hone in on the place to go to work mm -hmm. would be around confidence resilience and disruption mm. and like being able to disrupt yourself mm. and disrupt others which as a coach you're gonna have to do too mm. not mm. in those feet to the fire accountability whip your client kind of ways but some of the reflections and offering of things can feel disruptive especially when it's really hot and really what what they need mm. um but hearing that safety in numbers, how much safety is under it, and what you, you would know from trauma training is that when you're right up at the edge of something safe, uh, uh, that's safety related, you need to be able to practice in a way that's safe mm -hmm. versus throw yourself. So I wouldn't say, okay, go try and have these expressive conversations of saying, I'm a coach and this is what I do. And with people that, um, you know will challenge you or that you know don't agree with you or you know that will criticize you mm -hmm. um but it sounds like a practice space that could be good for you is finding people maybe through the training that you're in um maybe like the really safe friend mm -hmm. where you've already been through some shit and mm -hmm. you've come through it and so you can you can wrestle a little bit and not feel like your belonging is threatened mm. so, um, or even people who you've done developmental work with before and you create a, a conscious container to be in a disruptive practice mm. and then practice speaking truth that feels edgy 
so that you can feel the edginess and disruption in yourself and then see what happens in the other. Probably, if I'm going to predict from how I know humans to be and our kind of our, our um, patterns and our ways, is there's likely in your way of being for this um, harmonizing and safety is that what will flag as dangerous is far before something is. Mm. And that you could likely say something, share something, express something that will be well received or not threaten the relationship or might not be well received, but the person can wrestle with you on it. Um, and that without being able to practice, you never know. Mm. And so what it sounds like is for you, there needs to be these iterative moves of self-expression and disruption where you're at the edge of where you're comfortable. Mm. You're putting a stake in the ground. You're expressing a truth. And then to start doing that in an environment and with people where they know that you're at an edge and they're going to be with you with kid gloves on. Yeah. How does, does that land as a place to begin? Yeah, yeah. Like, um, most of my life is surrounded by a lot of those people now. Um, and, and then I think of people that are like, that more on the edge or more, yeah, further away from it. Um, and I can, I can really see how I could do that with, yeah, and kind of move out a bit more if that makes sense. It's, yeah. As I gain confidence more and more, yeah. Mm. Great. Yeah, and like the way to check internally mm. would be like, does this feel like a risk? Mm. And I take it. Mm. Because th this chameleon way, it sounds like checks for, are you okay? I'm okay. Is it safe? Mm. So, yeah. so that's the edge to play is it feels like a risk and I take the risk. And the more risks that you take, the more resilience you'll have being in that edgy state the further you'll get to go and then when you realize that you don't die and that the relationship isn't threatened and even getting to track what opens up that wasn't available by staying safe all of those things will contribute to building confidence yeah cool thank you does, so does that feel like yeah 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 it feels really good um and i love that of like the relationship doesn't end or um yeah but you can have challenging conversations um and in the what space opens up um because that's the thing that's missing is like when you don't have those conversations then you're you're missing out or you know like you're not having true dialogue and there could be something so powerful in that for you for the other person yeah 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 and when i link this back to what you're really desiring for your work you know it, it feels like you have a way that's deeply sensitive that really listens and attunes and a lot of human beings have never had somebody sit in front of them with their deep sensitivity and attunement and listen. Mm. So that gift to, to not bring that gift because of fear and safety, it would be such a shame. Mm. So I, I really, and I get how it's terrifying. Mm. So I, I really, I just want to really validate your right where you are, the stickiness and the challenge of being able to move fully into claiming that role and your leadership. And also, um, I just really want to want to validate your call to that path and how much we need you. And especially right now. Thank you. Yeah. And that, yeah feels feels really true um just for so long you know we live in a world that doesn't value sensitivity and so most experiences that i've had have been 
you know, it's been kind of a put down saying, oh, you're so sensitive or you're so oversensitive. And so more and more it's been something to be ashamed of. Mm. Um, and then in the last, well, you know, how many years of growing this muscle, I've been growing it, but I've still been growing it kind of hidden. <laughs> right. um, and yeah, that feels, and that's and it's why I was really stoked when I found you because I love how I've seen the way you coach. Um, that isn't the same as that kind of dominant way of being in the world of, of pushing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Oh, you're so welcome. My pleasure. It's a real pleasure and it's a real honor. And yeah, it feels like your sensitivity is your genius. And I really hope that you get to honor that more and more. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for being here. And, and thank you for, um, I, I know that there are a lot of very sensitive um, souls watching and people who are wrestling with how to give language to, to push away all of the shoulds and how to's to find and carve their own path. So a real deep gratitude for you for being here to contribute this to other people. Yeah. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. (laughs) Okay. Bye. Bye.